intention was to do this yesterday and that didn't work out. Um, mostly because I got cleaning obsessively, which is uh, kind of how I've been dealing with uh, being stuck at home all the time. I have, uh, I do not have obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, but I have obsessive compulsive tendencies. So um, whenever I have days where I'm feeling a little bit more stressed than others, I get into uh, like obsessive cleaning uh, of like really random things. Things that you can't really see, so it doesn't even look like I did anything that day. But yesterday I obsessively cleaned my kitchen. So, um, yeah. how are you guys handling all of the stuff for uh, the stress of this, kind of like these unknown circumstances? Um, I, I'm by no means do I think that obsessive cleaning is a healthy way to um, deal with things also practice yoga uh, and I also do my meditation and I also uh, you know kind of dive into that but my like um, my default um, is of is obsessive compulsive cleaning um, and it's not like uh, happy joyful cleaning and tidying uh, it's like um, it's like uh, scrubbing until my hands hurt and uh, yelling at everyone in my house so it's one of those few little things in my life that uh, <laughs> like, it's like really gets under my skin is when people are tidy um, and they're like oh, <laughs> it's just my OCD uh, no <laughs> it's, being tidy is not OCD uh, OCD is OCD uh, and you get diagnosed with it and it is like, um, I don't even have it. I just have tendencies. And uh, my tendencies are not enjoyable for me or anyone around me. That was a little bit of a rant, sorry. <laughs> so, this video is about essential oils for the root chakra. So, this list is not extensive. Um, there are so many different sources of information about essential oils. Um, all of them are different. So, it, you know, I really love, um, and I have a lot of the books written uh, by uh, Valerie Ann Warwood. And um, so a lot of my um, choosing of the oils that are on the list came from references uh, in her, written in her books. Um, I wanted to clarify a couple of things because this is the first video that I'm making that will talk about the essential oils. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to share before I move into talking about the oils. So this is not intended to replace medical um, information from your doctor. Your conversation with your doctor is important if you have like actual medical concerns. I feel like essential oils can be a nice adjunct therapy. Um, I feel like sometimes in really mild cases of things they can be um, they can be good. Um, I don't know for the people that are watching this that studied with me at the studio, practice with me at the studio, um, you will know that I had a flare of psoriasis on my elbows that I could not get under control for more than a year. I tried uh, every essential oil that I could. I tried changing my diet. I noticed mild improvement. Hi, Titan. Mild improvement at best. Um, it did not get better even once during that whole year. It was continuous. Uh, and then I went to my doctor and I got medicine from my doctor. Um, 
and it was gone, completely gone, um, within a week and a half. So I do believe in natural products for health, um, but I think that medicine is also good. So the other thing that I wanted to say is there is a lot of um, essential oils can be pricey. They can be really expensive. There are better qualities essential. There are better quality essential oils and uh, essential oils that are not um, as good quality. Um, it's hard because things can be um, mislabeled. Um, but if you trust the source that you're buying them from or know the source that you're buying them from. The essential oils that we sell at this studio, I have all of the documentation available. Um, if someone wanted it, I have like the, uh, the gas chromatometry, mass spectrometry breakdowns for the oils that we sell. Um, the prices are not um, maybe as expensive as you might expect because I buy them in large quantities and I don't mark up my uh, essential oils a lot because it's not the driving income of the studio. I don't, I don't need to mark them up a crazy amount. Um, it's supposed to be an adjunct to the people that are practicing at the studio and you already pay a substantial amount of money to practice yoga with us. So the other th last thing I wanted to say is you might hear the term therapeutic grade essential oils. Uh, if you research into it, uh, therapeutic grade essential oils is um, a trademarked, registered and trademarked uh, marketing term. There is no governing body for essential oils. There is no one that oversees them uh, on a big global scale the way that uh, there are things overseen by other um, agencies. So if someone is promoting um, therapeutic grade essential oils, it is a marketing term. And I'm not saying that it doesn't mean that the essential oils aren't wonderful because they are, but it is a marketing term. There isn't actually a certification for that. Just so you know. Okay, so there are kind of like general overarching oils that can be used to support and balance the root chakra. I've tried really hard to, um, like this list isn't very big, I put two oils for each um, kind of like affliction or whatever you want to call them um, that is common with root chakra imbalance. Um, I tried really hard to just only include oils that are usually a little bit more easily accessible and affordable. Um, there's an asterisk beside one oil, and we'll get to that. It's not an affordable oil. It is an incredibly expensive oil. Um, but anyways, so kind of like overall, if you're talking about essential oils for the root chakra, you're more usually thinking of like earthier, heavier smells. Um, so myrrh, patchouli, vetiver, rosewood, thyme, and balsam are some of the kind of um, broad range oils that can be used to help support and balance root chakra. Um, these work on um, not just like a, a physical level, but I would say um, more when I work with essential oils for myself, I'm thinking of uh, the emotional component of what the essential oils add for me. Um, they're heavy smelling. Um, they're usually really slow to get out of the bottle. They're really thick and viscous oils. Um, and they don't have to be used like standalone because they're so, they're so heavy, especially if they're uh, scents that you don't prefer they can be used as like base notes in essential oil blends so that you're still getting the um, 
the physical and energetic properties of the oil um, mixed in with smells that are maybe more palatable to you. Um, and then I put down a couple of um, some of the common uh, afflictions or uh, feelings associated with root chakra imbalance. So one of them is uh, poor circulation in the legs and feet and two oils that help with circulation are rosemary and clary sage. So when you are using um, essential oils, um, such a small amount is needed. Um, if you were to, um, you know, an, an average dilution ratio for a grown-up is like between three and ten percent, um, more towards the three uh, percent dilution ratio, um, and. Uh, when you're, and that's for like, um, especially important if you're gonna be using an oil on a fairly regular basis on your body. Um, uh, if you're using something for um, a limited amount of time or for something more acute, like um, headache or things like that, you can go like 10 to 30% dilution ratio. Um, and so dilution ratio, um, it, an easy way to think of it, it's like, um, I should probably double check this, but it's like a drop per teaspoon. A teaspoon is like five milliliters. Ten milliliters, teaspoon, hey Sash? Teaspoon is 10 milliliters. I can't remember. Anyways, it's about a drop per teaspoon is a 1% dilution ratio. So if you were looking for 3%, you would do like three drops. Anyways, um, so for poor circulation in your legs, a great uh, technique would be to uh, mix with a carrier oil. So carrier oils don't have to be anything crazy or elaborate. It can be oils that you have in your house, extra virgin olive oil. The only um, downside to extra virgin olive oil is that the smell can be strong um, and for some people the smell is off-putting when they're applying it to their body but if it doesn't bother you it's fine also sweet almond oil is a really wonderful um, uh, carrier oil to use it has uh, next to no scent and a really mild scent um, and it's great for skin jojoba oil also um, Coconut, fractioned coconut oil can be awesome. The only thing with fractioned coconut oil is the molecules are so big that the um, they can clog your pores. So that's one thing to think of, especially if you are um, acne prone and you're using this on places like shoulders, back, face, where some people experience acne. Um, I would I would maybe just a thought. Anyways, so. The rosemary and clary sage, you put a couple of drops in a, an, um, an amount of <laughs> um, carrier oil. So you could just pour the carrier oil in your hand, add a couple of drops, and then massage into your legs. And think about like kind of moving from the bottom of your leg up towards your heart. Usually when we do self-massage, we move um, in a way that's moving the fluids uh, towards our heart. So lymphatic fluid and blood. Um, another common kind of symptom with uh, root chakra imbalance is irritable bowel syndrome, peppermint and ginger. Um, peppermint is a very uh, vibrant and uplifting um, scent, but it is really good uh, to help controlling um, like spasm and pain. So that's you, and for this, you would use carrier oil and, and massage it on your belly. Um, and usually we go from right to left and then back over and right to left which is um, kind of following the path of the way that food would move through our digestive system. Constipation, same technique, massaging the belly, uh, pepper, uh, pepper, <laughs> patchouli and fennel are really great for constipation. Um, diarrhea, peppermint again for those cramps and lemon. Uh, and the last one is arthritis in the legs and feet. Again, there are tons of really great anti-inflammatory um, oils, um, but I was kind of more 
focusing on my own experience actually. Um, ginger and black pepper are both really warming um, in my own body. Um, they help me to feel relief quicker because it feels warming on my joints. When I make a, an arthritis blend for, um, for someone, they're two of the main two of the main oils that I use in my blend, and then along with other anti-inflammatory oils. So those were a couple, and I mean, the lists for any of these can be extensive. It's like not just the oils that can be used for each of the things I listed here, but also like the common um, afflictions with root chakra imbalance. So I just kind of picked a handful. So those are physical. These ones over here are more emotional, mental. So fear is one of the biggest uh, feelings associated with root chakra imbalance. Um, and two really great oils for fear uh, could be cedar wood and basil. Um, when we're using oils for um, physical support, um, they're usually more um, applied to the body um, with you know, either um, massage if that can be tolerated depending on pain levels um, or added to like a bath um, if massage is not tolerated or touch is not tolerated due to pain. Um, but with emotional uh, support, um, we're thinking more of um, maybe like inhaling. So that could be an essential oil diffuser. That could be having the essential oils, um, trying not to spill my coffee a little bit in your hands, rub your hands together, create a little bit of warmth, pop your hands in front of your face and take a few big breaths. Um, you can use, if you don't have an essential oil diffuser um, and um, and you don't feel like investing in one because like an essential oil diffuser can be pricey, uh, you can put a hot bowl of water uh, and drop a couple of um, drop a couple of drops of essential oil in it and put it in a room and the the heat will help with the um, evaporation of the oils. <laughs> we'll speed up a little bit, I'll get it into the air faster. Um, another thing that I really love to do is like, is like the steam inhalation method where I pour a bowl of really hot water, cover my head with a towel. I do it a lot for my skin um, also, when I have a cold or things like that, it can be really nice to breathe in that, um, that air. Oh, also, like just like roller balls, like rub, put on your pulse points, like your wrists, uh, your neck, um, and then your body heat is going to um, I just lost the word. <laughs> your, your body heat will uh, warm up the oils and help them evaporate quicker. Um, when we're applying oils to our body, we um, there's only a handful of oils that can be applied directly to your skin without being um, used in a carrier oil. Um, tea tree oil, if that doesn't bother your skin, and lavender are a couple of the only ones that people are recommended to use meat without carrier oil. Um, one of the reasons is because the oils are really potent um, and it can cause skin irritation or even chemical burn. Um, the other reason is that um, essential oils are volatile, volatile organic compounds and they evaporate um, very quickly. So if you take a, a straight essential oil and rub it onto your skin, it's like gone. If you've ever put essential oil on your skin or, or broken a bottle of essential oil and had to clean it up, like it's not even oily feeling. It's just, uh, you know, once you put it on your skin, it's it's basically gone very quickly. Um, so mixing with a carrier oil and diluting it doesn't make it less effective. It actually makes it more effective because it holds it in contact with your skin so that it can be absorbed by your body. Um, that's another way to tell if you have good quality essential oils. Essential oils shouldn't smell for very long. Um, if you can smell them strongly 
for like a whole day or longer than a day, it, it might be a fragrance oil that's been added to it. They, the smell of a good quality essential oil usually dissipates fairly quickly. That being said, things that are like heavier scents usually linger longer. Um, so the next emotion here is feeling ungrounded. Um, so two really great grounding essential oils are vetiver um, and cedarwood. Um, feeling lethargic, um, grapefruit and orange. So some of these are kind of um, like fear and feeling ungrounded um, might be more apt to show up if you have um, an underactive root chakra or um, the, if the energy level is deficient. Um, so you have not enough energy in that center of your body. So if you wanna add more of that grounding, um, if you have too much feeling of grounding and you feel like too much um, of that earth element already, um, then you might feel lethargic and then that, in that uh, why am I so bad with words today? In that circumstance, these two scents are really uplifting. So, um, feeling depressed would be another feeling if you had too much energy in your root chakra. Uh, lavender is a very, um, when you're talking about like uh, energy and emotions, lavender is kind of like a, it's good for everything. It works with all of the chakras. It works with a lot of our emotions. Um, so that's a really good one for feeling depressed. And neroli is uh, the most recommended one for people feeling depressed. Um, and I put an asterisk beside it because it is extremely expensive. So I still wanted to include it in the list because it is the most recommended one for feeling depressed, um, but it's, it's really expensive. Um, I also want to just point out that I put feeling depressed and not I'm suffering from clinical depression. I think that when we're talking about our mental health, um, things like essential oil, smells trigger feelings and feelings play into our mental health. And I think that in my own personal experience, um, they are beneficial, uh, but I do not want to convey the feeling or thought that these essential oils cure clinical um, diagnosis. If you are really depressed, I think that it's really important to speak to um, a doctor who has a background in dealing with mental illness and also speaking to like a, a clinical therapist, a, a registered counselor who has, um, who you can connect with. Um, the last one we have on the list here is feeling insecure. So feeling insecure, again, lavender and cedarwood. So you can notice too in some of these, like some of them kind of deal with more than one thing, um, which is true for all oils. Uh, they have uh, different chemical properties that help with different symptoms um, in our physical body and elicit different emotional responses in our emotional body, um, very much like our, our postures do. Um, when we're practicing asana, there are postures that are really great for our root chakra, but they also can touch on our, uh, um, oh my good lord, it's like Swadhisthana. I can't think of the English term for that right now. This is ridiculous. Postures can work on multiple chakras. So, <laughs> sacral, oh my God. Root chakra, sacral chakra, solar plexus, like most postures touch on a lot of um, energy centers and especially depending on the way that you practice them, the intention behind that. Anyways, that's a digression. I'm really good at digressing. So. If you have any questions about these oils or anything that I've talked about, please feel free to let me know. Other than that, uh, I'll be posting um, another two videos. So another root chakra yin and another root chakra um, 
restorative, and then we'll see where we go from there. All right, I'll talk to you soon.